Democratic nominee Terry McAuliffe appears well positioned to get his old job back. A number of polls show him in the lead in Virginia's gubernatorial race. New polling from Roanoke College shows McAuliffe with a seven point advantage over Republican challenger Glenn Youngkin. McAuliffe served as Virginia's governor from 2014 to 2018, leaving office after a one term limit. Youngkin is a former investment executive with the Carlyle Group. Virginia swung toward Democrats in the 2016 election and stayed solidly blue during former President Trump's term. But some political analysts say that President Biden's recent slump in the polls could hurt McAuliffe's campaign. Second gentleman Doug Emhoff heads to the state Saturday to campaign for McAuliffe. The two will attend an Asian American and Pacific Islander community event and a Canvas kickoff in Richmond. For more, let's bring in Harry Wilson. He's the senior political analyst for Roanoke College's Institute of Public Opinion Research, which runs the poll. Harry, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. So former Governor Terry McAuliffe leads in your new poll, but some of your survey shows Republicans with an advantage in certain areas. What were they? Um, what we found was, yes, Terry McAuliffe's ahead by seven points. He was ahead by eight points a month ago. So that race is pretty steady at this point. Uh, however, we did find an advantage for Republicans in terms of enthusiasm. That 43 percent of Republicans said they were extremely enthusiastic about voting compared to 35 percent of Democrats saying that. And we can say, well, that, you know, that, that may not be such a big deal. But in fact, we know that elections today often really turn on turnout. So if Republicans are more enthusiastic, that really is, is something I think that Youngkin can hang his hat on. Well, in 2020, Joe Biden won Virginia by 10 points against Donald Trump. His approval rating has dropped a bit in recent weeks. Could that be a problem for Terry McAuliffe's campaign? Uh, it certainly could be. Um, in our poll, I was, I was honestly a little surprised that, that Biden's approval rating did not drop very much. Uh, but a great example in Virginia actually is when Terry McAuliffe won in 2013, and he was ahead in virtually all of the polls by high single digits. And on election day, he won by 3%. And most viewers probably won't remember, mm. but in 2013, just before the election in Virginia, that was when the uh, Obamacare website crashed. So national politics really can intrude mm. on state elections, and we've seen that happen in Virginia. And we saw that happen with Terry McAuliffe eight years ago. So it certainly is possible again. Well, Harry, what is different about Governor McAuliffe's strategy in this race compared with the last time he ran? I think that's, that's a great question. I think in some ways his strategy is, is different. This time, uh, if anyone watched the, the debate, um, he seems to be trying to his best to run against Donald Trump. That's not surprising because Trump does not poll well in Virginia. And as you pointed out, um, Trump lost Virginia twice um, and by 10 points to, to Biden. So, um, so McAuliffe is really sort of running that sort of strategy. Uh, in addition to that, McAuliffe has, has really tacked to the left politically, as is true, I think, of a lot of Democrats nationally and in Virginia. The Virginia Democratic Party has moved pretty significantly, I would say, to the left in the past eight years. Uh, and McAuliffe has probably moved now in tandem with the party. Uh, he, he's emphasizing social issues more than he did eight years ago. Eight years ago, he really talked much more about the economy. He's still talking about the economy, but he's talking about social issues. He's talking about abortion rights, uh, made some strong statements about abortion rights and education uh, in, in the debate just a couple of nights ago. So I think his strategy is a little bit different, but he's really trying to shore up that Democratic support in what, again, is likely to be a base election in which turnout really matters. So, Harry, if the landscape in Virginia has shifted, as you say, where has Glenn Youngkin managed to make inroads with voters who may have voted for Governor McAuliffe last time? I'm not sure that, that Youngkin can really make inroads there. I think what he can try to do is maximize his base and get Republicans to turn out more. Republicans may be more motivated in 2021, as Democrats were in 2017 in Virginia, because the opposite party has control of the White House right now. Uh, and I think that's sort of what Youngkin's strategy is. He's also trying to get bring back some of those Republicans who were alienated by Trump, 
suburban women and some of the more moderate Republicans who were alienated by Trump, trying to get those back into the fold. Um, and, and in 2017, Republicans were not quite as strongly in terms of favoring the Republican candidate as Democrats were in terms of, of voting for Northam. What we're seeing in the polls right now is that Republicans are really coming home to Youngkin. And I think Youngkin's trying to really unify the party in that way. You know, Virginia has been so fascinating to watch its political landscape evolve over the years. Yeah, I wonder, to what extent do you think that Virginia's off-year gubernatorial race can be viewed as a bellwether uh, for the midterms? Everyone talks about that, and that's because only Virginia and New Jersey have statewide elections this year. Um, I'm not sure how much that really plays into national politics. I think maybe what it can tell us Certainly, it would tell us something if, if Republicans win the election in 2017 in Virginia, or excuse me, in, 20, in 2021. I think that would really tell us that there's something going on there. If McAuliffe wins and he wins by whatever amount, um, I think people would say, well, this is sort of Virginia is really trending Democratic. Virginia has not elected a Republican mm -hmm. statewide office since 2009. Um, and I was in Virginia long enough to remember when Virginia, when I moved to Virginia, it was solidly Democratic, then it became Republican, hmm. and now it seems to be solidly Democratic again. So it's it's hmm. not as easy. We used to see those shifts in Virginia with the party out of power in the White House. I'm not sure that we see that as much anymore. All right. Well, we're going to certainly be paying close attention. Harry Wilson. Harry, thanks very much for breaking it all down. My pleasure. Thank you.